All right, so uh, next up on the show, Stuart Austin, EFC light heavyweight, fighting uh, this coming November, November, I believe, 4th, right, uh, for the um, EFC 65 for the light heavyweight title. Thank you for being on the show, man. How's everything going in terms of training? And just uh, give us an update. Oh, great. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, stuff's really good at the moment. Um, I'm training hard at the moment. We've got lots of different partners coming in um, for me, which is, which is great. I'm relatively healthy at the moment which is something i can't say i've been for a long time so that's pretty good so you know i'm feeling really uh, I'm, I'm feeling really positive about this actually um it's nice to be back to light heavyweight i've only been there once so you know it's this time the weight weight has come off almost too quick yeah so yeah i'm feeling really good awesome good. now before we get into the, the fight and then the division the title i i, I, I need to ask you your, your nickname is he-man like, were you ever a, a fan of the, the cartoon series, Masters of the, of the Universe? Yeah, I, li- I liked it a little bit. Yeah, it was more it was more my brother's generation, He-Man was. Yeah, but yeah. I liked I, I did like it. I had some of the toys. I had the uh, Battle Cat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But it was uh, someone from the from the gym who actually gave me the name in the first place. Because I... Because uh, it resembles Especially your... when I'm training. Yeah, my my yeah. hair gets long and starts to... Turn into a bit of a. It's not too long at the moment. It turns into a bit of a bowl cut. Okay. You should bring <laughs> and, a sword uh, and, and a shield with you. Whip my shirt it. off. <laughs> yeah, you should bring like a yeah. sword and a shield with you to the ring. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. I've. I, I have to. I have thought about it. But the problem is, if you're that guy who brings a sword and a shield to the ring, you get, <laughs> get brutally, you know, bashed. Have you then got to drag your sword and shield out? Exactly. You know, yeah, like yeah. An idiot. <laughs> it's a big commitment. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, so you're actually you're back at light heavyweight. Um, you mentioned that right now. Um, how's the weight cut going? At, like, I mean, I, obviously it's coming off a lot better for you. But are, is this something yet you're gonna do? You know, from now on, is light heavyweight your division now and not heavyweight? Yeah. 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 Um, unless unless the right fight comes up at heavyweight, mm-hmm. you know, if the, a good opportunity is a good opportunity. Um, but my intention wasn't to go back to heavyweight for like for like a different my last fight I think I had a 10 I can't remember 10 or 11 people in a row turned me down or yeah. they were sort of injured so to speak or this or that and they couldn't do it that weekend or, and it just was getting a bit ridiculous and so I, I just <clears throat> you know I spoke to Graham who um, is the, the, the you know one of the head honchos yeah. at the EFC and he said he's got you know he had a heavyweight available at the time um, so I, I just jumped at the chance. I just wanted to fight. You know, it's it's important to stay busy. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So I took the opportunity. But 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 light heavyweight is where I want to be. You know, I want to go to. It's, it's my natural division. It's down to about I think about two twenty eight, two twenty nine now. Yeah. So I can cut from there. Um, I'm actually hoping. Uh, I'll, I'll I'm hoping to walk in the cage probably heavier than my last fight heavyweight. So because mm-hmm. I tried to put on a bit of weight between. So yeah, so yeah. it's really good. Nice. Awesome. Well, you're, you're following through like you're like you're pretty much like a veteran in the sport. Like you fought for Bellator and other promotions as well. Um, what's it mean to you to fight for the heavyweight title for Bama? And your thoughts on, on your, your your fight for EFC? EFC. Uh, the EFC belts, you know, it's it's a big belt. It's like obviously it's the biggest company in like Africa, yeah, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, quite a few of their guys have recently got signed, which is obviously a big thing to to think about um so i don't know it, it it's like to me the belt's are a bonus you know mm-hmm. the fight is what i want you know the guy's a good guy and he's he's had some finishes he's had some tough fights and he, he's built up a reasonable reputation you know guys who are like with solid records yeah. really good winning records are the guys you need to beat to move to the next level yeah at the end of the day like you know everyone could be king of their local show you know knocking out this bum and that guy and whatever, but like I, I want to be, you know, I want to be at the top. So you know, yeah. that's the way you want to go on legit shows, you know, and not, you know, not take the take the easy route. Yeah. So you're you're fighting Delcha. Is it is that did it surprise you to get the the, the title shot this quick with the promotion? Because this is only your, no. your second fight with the promotion, right? Yeah, but but like unlike a lot of the guys in this promotion, I'm coming with more of a background. So mm-hmm. you know, I yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a former um, uh, Bama champion at heavyweight. Yeah. Um, and my my light heavyweight debut, <clears throat> I was against like a ranked European guy, and like I just took him to pieces in like yeah. a couple of minutes. Um, so it's it's and and 
and like I I stepped up and fought Elvis Moyer because he's not someone people like to fight mm-hmm. because he, even though he's fairly one dimensional he's got a, he's since his takedown defense has got a lot better um, and he's you know got violent knockout power you know a lot of people are, I think were avoiding the fight with him so it kind of made sense for me but I just don't th- think there's many people in the sport who one way or another I can't take down like my my shots are quite good like my wrestling style takedowns but because of my my judo background. Yeah. Um, like when I fought, I fought a Polish wrestling champion, and I fought um, the one of the guys I uh, fought out in uh, um, Bellator was had pretty extensive wrestling background, mm-hmm. and like in that situation, I used my upper body clinch and you know judo style and sort of Greco style takedowns. You know, yeah. nobody apart from guys I've not, I've taken every single person down I've fought. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter how good they are at wrestling, um, you know. And unless I've knocked them out, basically, you yeah. know, it, it is what it is. So I, I rely on my, you know, I trust in myself. Yeah, oh, cool. And uh, you know, if if you do win uh, the title um, in November, do you want to, um, you know, because every man has changed a lot, you know, nowadays. Now people are are winning titles and going for super fights. Is that something that you want to do too? Is like go for two titles at one time or, or fight super fights? Uh, potentially, like those guys are pretty big. Um, yeah. Like Elvis Moyo was, I think he was about 118 kilos when I fought him. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was, I, I was 103. So I, sorry, I, I always forget to convert it because they work in kilos as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was like, he was like 260. Yeah. Um, and I weighed in a, a, about 228. I want to say Jeez. 227. Yeah. Jeez. Um, you know, and that was like <laughs> at the time I was a little bit lighter than that. You know, I, I, I think I drank about two liters before I got on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm actually heavier now than I was was then. Right. Um, but um, and, and Andrew Van Ziel, who's the heavyweight champ, is bigger than him. He cuts to make the heavyweight limit. So I don't know. It's um, it's certainly something I'm looking at. But you know, one one step at a time. Right, I'd like to time. win this win this fight. Uh, possibly defend it and then think about getting the second belt. But but really, in career-wise, the, you know, the smart choice is a, a light heavyweight. Mm-hmm. I've had opportunities offered me, you know, some really big fights against big mm-hmm. names at heavyweight. And I'm just at a point where I'm like, I've picked my weight division and it's just like, what is the point fighting, you know, some of the big superstars of the sport? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> As sort of like on three weeks or four weeks, and I think, well, this is an opportunity, and you know, I see people, especially if they're a little bit older, they're they're beatable. But then I'm just thinking, if I lose, it pushes me back. And what I want to do right now is move forward in my division, which is light heavyweight now, mm-hmm. um, and it's just building the name as a light heavyweight. Obviously, most of my reputation is at heavyweight, so you know, it's, I've got to, I've got to build myself in this division before mm-hmm. I can be jumping around and doing whatever yeah. I want. How, how soon are you going to head out to Johannesburg? Or is that something? Do you, is you hit out that week? Is it is it something that you do two weeks prior? Or what do you do? Uh, hopefully as soon as possible. Hopefully, ten to fourteen days, um, like before the fight. Uh, it's at altitude, so it's yeah. um, it's I think about four and a half thousand feet, something like that. It's it's pretty high. It's pretty high. Yeah. Um, and last time I fought, I was I was actually quite surprised, you know, just how much it affected me the first couple couple of days. Yeah. The first few times I was on the treadmill, uh, just doing some conditioning and stuff. But I adapted quickly. But obviously, in a five round fight, you want to have as much adaptations as possible. But I'm right. I'm trying to do everything I you know everything I can that's you know obviously that's allowed that I, I get every advantage that I can. Um, you know, I've done my research. On the sort of sports science mm-hmm. side of it, on how to how to get the most out of myself at that altitude. Yeah. Nice. Well, this fight is uh, it's obviously for the championship uh, title. So, um, this training camp has it been different than other training camps mm-hmm. because of, it's for a title, or has it been the same? Um, I don't really change too much for opponents, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, I'm fairly well rounded. I don't know if you've seen many of yeah. my fights, but yeah. most of my fights are very uh, pretty different. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll go out there and strike with someone, and then the next match I won't, you know, I'll barely throw, you know, almost throw, yeah, only throw yeah. punches to get in for my shots, or then the next match I'm looking to clinch up, and, you know, I can, so, like, I kind of do as I want a little bit in the fight, you know, mm-hmm. we'll have tendencies uh, with what we're going to do, but I, I kind of go out there and we go work it out. I'm, 
I can do most things in this, you know, in the sport. You know, if you you name it, I, I, probably the only technique I've done my head I can't really do it in terms of striking. I can't, I can't do spinning hook kicks. You know, that's <laughs> it. But about everything else, I'm I can do. So like right. I like to play as we go. You know, adjust yeah. my style as I'm as I'm going in, and you know, my sort of corners advice. Yeah. Now, so several uh, years ago, I know you made a um, some kind of a, what your your thoughts on the sport overall and the athletes in it. You considered more a- MMA uh, fighters as athletes than fighters. Is that something that still you still feel that way, or is it? How, how do you how do you want or, or can you elaborate in terms of what your thought process is on on the sport what, overall? Meaning my, my, myself or the or all, just all the people, all everybody, everybody in general. Because I know you consider well, yourself like a, a premier athlete, and you are. Um, yeah. But you can also consider the the. Um, I read that you considered fighters more of the in, in MMA athletes rather yeah. than fighters themselves. Yeah. I think a lot. I think a lot of the best fighters are athletes. Yeah. Um, if you look at the the top guys, you know there are some of the gritty guys in there. But if you, I mean, if you, if you look at the the, the weekend, um, you know, just in the UFC, you know, you look at Demetrius Johnson. Yeah. Nobody, you know, he he's a he's a pure athlete. He's incredible. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, he's not just some hard nosed guy who's gonna go in there and you know, and there's still there is a place for that in the sport, you know, yeah. and, and some of those guys, you know, get so good at what they do, they're able to push through I'd say almost like Cody Garbrandt's almost that type of fighter. He's a mm. fighter. Yeah. But I think in the majority of cases, more people tend to be, you know, treated more athletically. I mean even even Cody, I say that to a point, you know, yeah. Cody's like he also you know, he might be a fighter, <laughs> but he also happens to be a freak, you know. Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. Athletically, yeah. he's phenomenal. He's a monster, <laughs> you know, a tiny yeah. monster. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. Like you still see those guys in 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 certain divisions, you know, who just carve out a path by just <clears throat> knocking people's teeth mm-hmm. out and snap, you know, like and and. But I think I think more people, are, you know, just trying to be more athletic, trying to be more like professionals, because I think that's the way you want to go if you want to be. If you want to be a professional athlete, you've got to act like a professional athlete. Yeah. You know, yeah, then exactly, yeah. you look look at any other sport, you know, if you want to get paid the big bucks, you have to be a, you know, yeah. you know be a professional. Right. Yeah. And we, we talked about the person that kind of set that trend um, was GSP. It was a, one of the first fighters yeah. out there that kind of just had that athletic, like a real athlete where other athletes and other sports kind of look to him yeah. as a real athlete. It was one of the first prequel to do that. Yeah. He really took it to another level, didn't yeah, he? Like yeah, his yeah. his level of professionalism, and I th- I still think you can still have that the fun side in. of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you can still have these you know crazy characters, and <laughs> yeah. you know that's fun. But I mean, even look at Connor. Connor Connor's the perfect example of both. Yeah. You know, no stone is left unturned with his training. You see, yeah. saw his camp for the Mayweather fight. It's out, yeah. You know, it's insane. Yeah. Like some of the stuff he's doing. You know, he's investing some of that money he's being paid. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, the guy's, you know, he's clearly a wild man as well, you know. Yeah. You know, if, if he hadn't found the sport, imagine, you know, he'd be probably, probably. on the streets of Dublin, you know, outside a pub, kicking somebody's head <laughs> yeah. in or something, wouldn't he? Or a pro wrestler. Know? Or a pro wrestler, yeah, right? Pro wrestler. Oh, man. Oh, hun- I would, oh. <laughs> there's my second call. I would love to be a pro wrestler. It's really, so really? fun. Yeah, it's wicked are you, fun. Like are, you a um, fan, like, are you a fan of the WWE or, or other promotions? No, not so much. I like a lot of the old stuff. Um, yeah. I love. I'll be honest. I'm more. I'm as much a fan of old school like wrestling promos as anything else. Yeah. You know, there's right. nothing better than like some old school Ric Flair. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's yeah. it's just it's just great. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's you know it draws you in. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I, I'll dip, dip my toes in the water. I went to I went to a TNA show last year, nice. and that was nice. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah they're so cool. Yeah, so yeah. so cool. Um, awesome. You know, some of the stuff the guys are doing is just like, ah, oh, I was, I was honestly, I was terrified for them. Yeah. You understand, guys jumping on like, oh, who was it? Is it um, one of the English guys? He went through one of their reality shows. An English lad, anyway, smaller guy. Yeah. But he was on the top of the cage. He jumped. He's like those guys ain't jumping. Da- I was amazed, like because I've <laughs> yeah. I've not seen a cage like match sort of stuff their yeah. style live, and he didn't jump down. He jumped up off the cage. Oh my oh god! Nice. And I was just like, 
you know, it's a lot of the stuff I don't think they really do in the WWE mm, yeah. anymore, do they? Because yeah. they're worried, you know, about well, and these guys are just. They they do sometimes. I mean, actually, I mean, this past yeah, weekend, this past Sunday was Hell in the Cell. I was, Shane, and Shane McMahon, ah, Shane McMahon his, jumped off the, the cage. Street, he jumped yeah. off the cage, and, and the table didn't break. He kind of, his body kind of bounced off the, the <laughs> table, oh. and then it broke. But he was he was high up. He was all the way at the top of the cage when yeah. he when he oh man flew off that's that cage. Brutal. Yeah. yeah, and he's up there in age too. He's not he's not like a like yeah. A young, he was young guy. like, like he his, was. In his 50s. You know, attitude era and all that, wasn't yeah. it? When, yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. No, I, that I, those guys are still I love doing it. that. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, do you do like, like, like those kind of style promos after your fights? Or uh, I'm trying to add a little bit. Um, you should, man. I normally. Um, and you know what it I works? normally. Bash America. Uh, what one? <laughs> you bash America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the well, the thing is, if you if you I can do the same thing in South Africa to the yeah, South Africans, can, can, they're pretty can. nationalistic. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be, yeah. Oh man, they they the, some of them already deal. starting to hate me. Literally, <laughs> yeah. you, uh, it, it was crazy. Like the run up to the last fight, I only had a bit of fun with it. I you know I was sort of you know a bit of a smile on my face while I was saying yeah. some stupid stuff, you know, yeah. and uh, and they were going wild, so angry, and people were putting crazy money on the fight. Um, all my friends were so upset because you could only bet on the fight in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, you like all the South African gaming websites were taking it, but you had to have a South African account. Um, and the odds were like four to one against me. It was mental. And the guy, wow. would, you know, and just like people were throwing bias, money yeah. down to see yeah. me lose. And I was it's just, <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's so funny. If, if you win, um, this, and I think it'll be the same this time. If you win the bout, um, you should spray paint it, man. <laughs> oh. in, in style. Just like a big British flag, <laughs> yeah, 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 do that and say, oh, man, and tell the crowd, wild, wouldn't it? yeah, and tell the crowd they yeah. worship you, and yeah, all that good stuff. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, there's, and there's a bit of history there as well with the UK and uh, yeah. South Africa as yeah. well, isn't it? All the, yeah. so you so the ultimate hero, man, ultimate hero. Yeah, yeah. And it, it doesn't matter if they boo you or cheer you, it just matters if they care. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> no, I'm a, no, like I had a good reception. To be fair, like yeah. people were really cool out there. Like I, it, it's it's the sort of one that, which I imagine is kind of like a wrestling audience. You know, people like to boo you, but yeah. they still kind of like you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, you yeah. know, they in the same way, like even people who don't like, you know, something like a Chael Sonnen kind of like him. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like they like to hate him. You know, yeah. it's not like a real. It's it's fun though. It's cool. Yeah. Really, the sport is huge out there. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's good to know. You know that their, their last event, their event with Yannick Bahati um, and Drickers Duplessis, mm -hmm. they had um, nearly two million people watch it just on, on in South Africa, That's and then crazy. it goes out yeah. across um, it goes out across all sub-Saharan Africa as well, and then streamed on live uh, on in online. Yeah, but like they had millions of people watching it. It's mental. Like it's That's on a, awesome. like a it's on a um, terrestrial channel, like mm -hmm. a basic channel. Yeah, a nice. free, it's huge. It's so popular. It's 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 really different, certainly to the UK. Yeah. Even in in the UK, the UFC, like, you know, you start to see some posters. Yeah. Um, but it's still such a like, Is you know, it... if you know, you know, sort of thing. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. I, I get recognised at MMA shows <laughs> yeah. or in MMA gyms, but apart from that, you know, never. And even even like. You know, I'm friends with like, you know, obviously through gyms and stuff with some good UFC fighters and stuff, and they barely ever, mm. you know, ha barely ever get recognised. Which I suppose is kind of a good thing in the UK. Um, yeah. You know, you get a bit more anonymity. anonymity. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. At least from our standpoint over here in in like America, I guess it, it seems like it would be a lot bigger. Like like a lot of fighters would get a little bit more attention. But I guess going? I guess it's not so much. It's still growing. Yeah, it's still growing. Like, yeah. I think, I don't know, the UK, I'm not, I don't know, like, we still don't really like fighting. Um, mm. We People love it, and yeah. we've got such a rich history in boxing. Some people love it, but so many people just hate the violence, and they hate this uh. and that, and and it's, um, like, even with the BBC, um, it, it's only till, I think, I, I was actually the first MMA fighter to be featured on any BBC thing ever. That's crazy. I was on, like, a, a radio show at, at drive time for two minutes once. Yeah. And then they slowly trickled. And then all of a sudden, they were like, oh, okay, we'll let Conor McGregor. Yeah. You know, because he's just so big, they can't deny it anymore. Can't deny it. But it was, that was last year. It was only oh, last year. Man. They started having anything to do with MMA That's on. That's crazy. 
on their shows. Yeah, absolutely yeah. wild. You know, like how how big of a thing it is, and they're just not putting it's anything not into it. I, it's not that accepted yet. It's sort of I think still. people people do, yeah. but I think almost like I don't want to say the establishment, like it's a big con, conspiracy, conspiracy or something. Yeah. But almost, yeah, it, it's kind of a bit o- over the top. But yeah. you know, almost the general like, public. Yeah, it's more, I mean, even general probably everyone watches it a little bit. I mean, lots of guys, and especially younger generations do, kids do. Um, but I think it's still seen as a bit of an oddity, mm-hmm. um, a bit of a show, a bit of a sort of sideshow more than a, and a sport, yeah. Well, one, good, like one thing that you can do to make people notice you is walk around the streets with a belt if you win the belt. <laughs> Um, that would probably work. That would yeah. probably work. Like Tim Sylvia. Tim yeah. Sylvia, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Tim Sylvia back is in the day. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> you should put a strip clothes with that belt, so you can probably do the same thing. <laughs> Get some girls, too. <laughs> oh, man. All right, man. Yeah. Hey, it's been great talking to you, Stuart. Um, we wish you all the best of luck, you know, on your fight on November 4th. We look forward to it. Um, Cheers. Thank you. You know, I'm sure you're going to get that, bring home that belt. Um, if you want, uh, give us a give us a give a shout out to the fans. Uh, let them know where to find you on social media, maybe even some of your sponsors if you like. Oh, cool! Thank you very much. I'm um, at at Stuart Austin MMA uh, S T U A R T A U S T I N M M A on everything basically. Um, yeah, uh, my sponsors at the moment is just XS Guard, uh, yeah. Gum Shield Company. Yeah. Um, speaking to a few people, hoping to get some other people on board. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, nice. Thanks to Fight Zone London, um, Titan Fighter, uh, Commander Temple Gym. Actually, I'm, I'm getting a nice big T Ortiz list. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> Oh, I, don't, I always forget. No, no pressure, pressure. Yeah, thanks. No, no pressure. pressure, man. No pressure. Well, you know, best of, <laughs> yeah, best of luck, Stuart, in, in your training camp. Hope you stay healthy and hope you uh, you win a title on November 4th. Uh, but until then, dude, like, Josh and I are looking forward to your heel turn, man. Just order, like, a big robe. You know, <laughs> go to the Rick Flair robe. Yeah, to go to Rick Flair robe. Bash America, <laughs> Bash Africa, the Bash everybody. Monkeys. And I'm not ordering it. I'm be- I'm making it myself. You've got to hand make these things. It's not authentic. Yeah. Even, even better, yeah. man. <laughs> My feather works through the roof. Yeah, yeah. Cut that heel promo too when you win that title as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll talk to you later, man. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.